Yeah. I was a generalist caseworker, so we dealt with um, uh, adult and, and uh, child probation and parole. Uh, I worked with families where there were child protection issues. Um, I did um, children's court appearances, pre-court reports, the broad spectrum of work that workers in the department did at that time. All right. Yeah. And from about, you say, early 1979 to mid to late 1981, you worked at Wynne Leighton. Yes, I did. But for a period of about six months, you were seconded to the Children's Court Advisory Service, which was not connected to Wynne Leighton. No. no. What work did you do at Wynne Leighton from 1979 to 81? I was one of two workers in the liaison and what was called the Liaison and Referral Unit, um, and that was uh, a unit that was, um, I guess it was based in head office, but we were physically located in the institution. So I was located in uh, Wynne Leighton, and my role was to provide, as the title suggests, liaison between the regional workers and the institution. Um, and also um, the referral part. I guess that, that refers to um, where the girls might go after they left the institution. So we had a, a role in sourcing some of those placements. And... Okay. Were you in court while Mr Fitzgerald gave evidence? I was, yes. Do you remember Mr Fitzgerald? I, I've said that I have a memory of his name, but I don't really remember him, no. In working with a child like BGD, who I'll come to shortly, you've, we, we've already heard today there would be a regional worker like Mr Fitzgerald. Yourself, in your particular role as a liaison, social worker liaison referral, yep. would there also be a caseworker for the child? Uh, in the institution? Yes. No, there would be youth officers. Okay. So the section staff, yeah. Do you remember with BGD that a, 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 a Mr or Mrs Best, a T Best? I re when I've seen the documentation, I remember the name, but I don't really remember very much more okay. than that. Yeah. And would it be the case that you would work together as a team, the youth officer, the, yourself as the liaison officer and the regional officer? Uh, yes, we did. I think that's fair to say. Um, within the institution, um, the decisions were made by institutional staff, but we would have input discussion around what might happen, and then it would be my role to feed information back to the regional worker. And did you have somebody that you could report to or seek advice from as a supervisor? Um, not really. We had a... Well, you know, this is my memory. I'm, I'm really going on sort of memory. Sure. I can't be 100% sure, but we had a manager in head office, but that I don't recall her having that um, casework type supervisory relationship with us. I would say that how things happened were within the institution at the weekly meetings. It was a kind of a more of a mutual discussion than me going to a particular person for supervision. We didn't really have that model at that time. You note in your statement that you contributed to weekly case planning meetings along with the section staff, that is youth officers and Wynne Leighton management. Was the superintendent and assistant superintendent at those meetings? I don't think the superintendent was, but the deputy superintendent would chair them. And actually, there were two of those. But, um, yeah. Can you recall who they were during your period at Wynne Leighton? Well, Marilyn Minister is the one that I recall, and then I think maybe it was Mr Fitzgerald's or somebody's evidence has um, mentioned Graham Lord, and then I remembered him as well. Okay. And what was their role, apart from the chairing them? Did they have any particular say in the treatment or care of the girls? Well, they were... I, I get, um, well, I'm not really sure. They, they may have had some... They would have had information fed to them and they were the sort of ultimate overseers, if you like. But I wasn't really a Winlayton staff member, so I didn't have that daily responsibility for the girls. That was the Winlayton staff, if that makes sense. Yeah. All right. You were employed by the department at that stage oh, yeah. and you're employed specifically to work at Winlayton? Yes. What were your work hours? Um, Monday to Friday, nine to five. All right. And you note in your statement at paragraph seven that you did have a role in counselling and assisting the girls with goal setting. Yeah. Was part of that counselling also counselling in terms of general emotional welfare and wellbeing? Uh, yes, it would have been. 
Yeah. And on occasions, did you work with a psychologist which, who would be assigned to <coughs> the girls? Um, not with, as in any kind of co-counselling or co-therapy role, if you like, but um, uh, in terms of referral and information sharing, yes. Did you have anything to do with the triad program at Winlayton? No. You note that you met with parents occasionally Very and decisions occasionally. regarding girls were made within that team environment. Did you have any... You had training in terms of a social work degree. Was there training in the social work degree directed to children? Um... I'm searching my memory banks a bit, but we would have done a child development theory. Um, and I don't know, I can't say much more All right. than that. Um, Did you receive any tra training either during your degree or subsequently, but prior to your work at Wynne Layton, about how to respond to allegations of sexual abuse? No, it was not something that we knew about in the way that we do now. All right. So was it something that was even in your mind as possible, that any of the girls had experienced sexual abuse in their background or would do at Wynne Layton? Um, I would say, broadly speaking, no at that time. And I know that sounds really odd now, but I think that's probably a fair comment, an honest comment, yeah. Do you recall any policies or procedures that you were directed to from the department no, or when later? No, um, I'll just finish the question so it goes on to the record. No, uh, so I take it from what you've said that there were no policies or procedures that you were aware of from when later or the department that, deal, that dealt directly with sexual abuse and how to respond to it? That's right, I wasn't aware of any. Okay. You remember that the Liaison and Referral Unit was a new unit. Mm. What was it intended to do? Well, it was, I think it was intended to try to streamline some of the processes that were in place um, because regional workers were um, both uh, overworked or at least, you know, carrying pretty heavy caseloads and obviously they were distributed all around Victoria. So when a young person was somewhere like Winlate and they just couldn't have that same contact, but physically weren't able to. So it was about um, providing somebody in the institution who could, um, I, guess, I guess, represent in a way the regional worker and uh, um, send information backwards and forwards between, you know, each party that was responsible for the child's welfare. Do you recall now how many children, on average, you had to look after? No, I'm sorry, I don't. Are you able to recall whether you thought you had a heavy workload or a light workload? Uh, well, that did depend a little bit on whether the institution itself was full at the time. If, if there were lots of girls there, then obviously my caseload was heavier, but if there just happens to be a bit more of a lull, then that was reduced. I certainly recall being very busy. Yeah. You were 24 years of age when you started... Six, oh, I'm sorry, 26 yes. years of age when you started at Wynne Layton. Um, can, do you recall dealing with many children at Wynne Layton who had had very difficult or disturbed backgrounds? Um, look, I think it's fair to say that most of them had had certainly a level of disturbance because they wouldn't have been in Wynne Layton otherwise. Um, and then within that there was uh, a range, um, yeah. As a young woman yourself, did you find the job overwhelming or satisfying or can you generally tell us how you I experienced it? I loved that job. I really loved that job. I really, really, really liked working with the girls. I really cared about what happened to them and, I, yeah, I did like it. I'm going to come now to BGD. You've said in your statement, whilst I do remember BGD, I do not remember specific events but you have been able to refresh your memory from many of the documents. Yeah. Have you read the statement of BGD? And no, I, no, I only heard it this morning. Okay. I was here and heard it. You, you, heard, you heard her evidence? Yes. And so you haven't read her statement or seen any of the annexures? I've seen, I think my barrister showed me one paragraph in this last couple of days. All right. Um, I'm going to ask shortly that you be provided with a copy of that statement so I can take you to specific documents. Mm -hmm. What do you recall about BGD? Just 
casting back on it. And this is without the knowledge that that I've sort of regained, if you like? Yes. I guess what I'm trying to get yes. is, did, did she stand out in your memory as a, a child who was in particular need of care or distress? Um, I, yes, I, I remember, um, I remember that um, it was a, it was a very complex situation. Um, she was a very conflicted young girl in terms of this situation with her dad. Um, and, and everything that I say is non-judgmental and not blaming, but this, the conflict that she experienced um, um, was part of, under, underlay then how we tried to work with her. Yeah. Had you ever encountered a, a child previously who was the victim of incest or rape by a father? Not that I, no, not that I know of. And I take it from what you've told us already that you didn't have any training in how to deal with and look after a child who was the victim of rape by a father? No. Sorry. You note BGD was assigned to you in about early April 1979 upon her admission to Wynne Leighton. You met with her on an approximately weekly basis and you may have met with her more often as requested by BGD or when Leighton or regional staff. How long did you have involvement with BGD for? In terms of the period of time she was in at yes. Leighton, not the weekly. So no, that's right, the, um, the entire yeah. period of time. Yep. Um, well, that would have been the whole time she was there, I would say. Okay. I don't remember, but yeah. All right, if she was transferred to another institution, then you that would not would have continued. Yeah. You were made aware of BGD's statements of sexual abuse by her father early on in your dealings with her. Is yes. that correct? I don't recall that, but I'm assuming that from the documentation. Okay. Do you remember Michael Groom's involvement with BGD? Um, mainly through the documentation um, and having read that I remember that he was involved with her, if that makes sense. I, I don't recall, at, you know, back to that time. But, yeah. Do you remember that when you were involved in BGD's care, you thought that there was one particular person in the team who was responsible for decision making around her? Um, I think, well, my memory is that um, the girls did have one particular youth officer who was their sort of allocated youth officer, but then, you know, it was a 24-hour institution, so obviously there was shift work. Um, I suppose if you wanted to put a label on it, you would maybe say the senior youth officer or maybe the deputy superintendent or the superintendent. I, do you yeah. recall that BGD was discussed at these weekly meetings that took place? Well, yes, yeah, she would have been. And were there case notes or minutes taken from the meetings? There would have been, yes. And would there be a record in those meetings as to what was supposed to occur in terms of her ongoing care or treatment? Well, there should have been. I don't recall, or, but yeah. Do you recall who was responsible for taking the minutes? Um, no, I don't. I, did I could you, speculate, but I don't really know. Did you yourself have a case book that you took notes in about particular clients? I would have, yes. And do you know whether or not that was kept at Wynne Leighton as part of her records, I would the children's records? I would assume so. I certainly didn't keep it. That wouldn't have been appropriate. Do you recall in a general sense what the decision-making was about BGD being abused by her father? That is... What was going to be done about it? I, I'm relying on a sort of an impressionist memory, um, and I'm probably uh, remembering it from a fairly uh, from the from a social work perspective. So, my memory is that um, we were concerned for BGDs. Um, mental health and well-being. Um, we were concerned for uh, the 
the fact that her relationship or her feelings about her relationship with her father were so conflicted, such that sometimes she did want him to visit and sometimes she didn't. Um, and my memory is that we were trying to balance that and to enable her to, to sort out those feelings and, in fact, be able to separate from her father and from that relationship. And I don't mean by that, you know, sending her off to do that on her own, but in a therapeutic context. So that's I'm kind of talking in, in that therapeutic way about that's my memory, if that makes sense. You say in your statement, my concern, I'm reading from paragraph 22, mm -hmm. my concern was to assist BGD to separate herself from her father. This was difficult because BGD sometimes expressed a strong desire to see her father. Mm -hmm. She was confused and angry about the situation. From a social worker's perspective, I took the view that BGD's contact with her father at Winlayton was unhelpful and I did not encourage or condone it. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? You stand by that statement? Yep. Do you agree that there's nothing in there that indicates that you arranged for BGD to be kept away from her father? That is, there was nothing there in place to ensure that she did not have ongoing contact with her father? Yes, there's not. Uh, you say you wanted BGD to feel safe in Winlayton and to trust us at Winlayton, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry, the staff. Yes. And you go on to say you were concerned about BGD's relationship with her father. I wanted to support her in making the separation from her father. I did not express the view that at any time BGD should return to her father's care. Do we take it from what's been said so far that there was that BGD's relationship with her father was treated as a complex relational problem as opposed to a situation where a father was raping his daughter? Well, that's difficult to answer with a yes or no response, I think. Um, I understand, I get the point that you're making, and I agree that um, in my statement and I guess in the other material that I've looked at, it doesn't say really strongly and clearly this is what happened and this was wrong. But I don't think I can either can really agree that it was that we were just treating it as a relational problem. We knew what the problem was, if that makes sense, but I agree that we haven't articulated, it wasn't articulated well in the documents that I've read. But do you agree that it also wasn't treated as seriously as a father raping a daughter should have been treated? Um, I guess I would say yes to that, although I would say with reservation. But... But for example, nowadays, if you were doing this job in Winlayton oh. and it was disclosed to you by a child that their father had raped them, would you ever condone that child having a visit from their father? Uh, no, but I didn't at that time either. But no, these days, these days it is much clearer. Okay, yeah. but you were part of it. I'm not trying to... Yeah, uh, no, you, you appreciate that my role here is not to blame. We're just <laughs> trying to understand the Royal Commission. And you were part of a team, you've already made that clear. Yes. But you were part of a team that was making decisions about the welfare of this child. Yep. And you were part of a team that was making decisions about who she could and couldn't access within her family. And as part of the team a decision was made by you and others that BGD could access her father or vice versa, he could access her, even if su supervised, correct? Um, well, I, I'm not really sure about that. I can't, I don't remember being part of the decision or not part of the decision. It is a decision that could have just been made within the section and within the institution. And I may have had input, and I'm sorry, I don't recall one way or the other. But given that you were part of a casework team meeting every week, you would have at the very least found out about the visit? Yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And you at no stage expressed your opposition to the visit? I don't remember one way or the other. I do know in some documentation that it's noted that I did express some concern about that. But, um, you didn't ever try to stop a visit taking place, is that fair? No. I mean, yes, that yes, is fair. Yes, All right. Sorry, yes, um, can I ask that you be shown BGD 17? So what I'm showing you is... Okay. <coughs> I think my, my instructing solicitor will assist, but what I'm showing you is... might come up on the screen. 
or it might be easier to read in paper, whatever suits you. What I'm showing you is some attachments to BGD's statement. Yeah. This note is a review action sheet. Can you tell the Royal Commission who was responsible for filling out these sheets? Um, my memory is it's the youth officers at Winlayton. Am I supposed to be actually looking at one or just...? Uh, shortly you will be oh, looking okay. at one. If you could turn to BGD 17. Do you see that's a typed document? Yep. The youth officer is noted in the right-hand corner to be T-Best. Mm -hmm. There's a date of the 5th of June 1979 on that document. Mm -hmm. On the left-hand side, it indicates date of last meeting, 22nd of May 1979. Mm -hmm. And down the bottom of that, under community supervisor, is J Lines, B Fitzgerald, South Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Is there anything on that document that assists you to tell the Royal Commission who typed those notes? Well, I think that it would have been the youth officer. They're not, I am fairly sure that I was not responsible for writing review action sheets. They were done from the section or the unit. And were the review action sheets presented at the weekly meeting? Uh, yes. So you would have had an opportunity to read them? Yes. And would you have had a copy of them on your file? Don't know. All right. Um, if you just read with me the events since last meetings, you'll see it reads, father visited, a sensual visit, mm. very close-knit, not normal father-daughter relationship, oblivious to everyone. Father saw Michael Groom. Interview revealed that father clammed up and he did not really want to see Michael Groom, evaded questions, made veiled threats about getting BGD out. If he comes again, Jay Lyons will see him alone as he saw M. Groom as a rival. And it goes on. I should just make it clear if I haven't already. Um, Ma'am, your maiden name was Lyons, is yes, that right? That's right. Yes. Okay. And so that reference to Jay Lyons is a reference to you. Do you recall now, having read that, that you were aware about that meeting, which took place in either May or June 1979? Um, oh, yes, yeah, I, I would have been there, I would say. The notation there, father visited, a sensual visit, very close-knit, not normal father-daughter relationship, indicates, doesn't it, that BGD's father should still have been seen as a threat when he was visiting her? Yeah that clearly that, that it was not appropriate to put BGD in the position of seeing her father at that stage? Just need to nod. Sorry. Sorry, yes. OK. Do you know now what your reaction was to learning about that visit and what had happened there? Do I remember? Yes. No, I'm sorry. I really don't. Do you recall that visit being discussed in the weekly meeting? No. The note there, Jay Lyons will see him... I withdraw that, I'll read the full note. If he comes again, Jay Lyons will see him alone, as he saw M. Groom as a rival. Does that trigger your memory as to whether you did or did not see BGD's father? Uh, the only memory that I have of seeing her father was seeing her and her father together once, and I think that was fairly early on in her time at Winlayton. It was very unusual for me to see parents. All right. um, on that occasion sorry, when you I, saw... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't recall ever seeing him on his own. OK. On that occasion when you saw BGD and her father, do you have any recollection as to what that meeting was like? Um, yes, I do. It was... Um, Am I allowed to... I don't know if I'm allowed to say this about the father. I, well, I mean, I just... He was a very creepy... I, to be honest, I found him a very creepy okay. man. So when you saw that, mm -hmm. um, did it occur to you that BGD was at risk from her father? Yes. Yeah. Well, I thought that all along. So that would have reaffirmed your belief that she should not have contact with her father? Yes. Sorry.
Could you turn to BGD 26, which is again another review action sheet? Yeah. The youth officer noted there in the right hand corner is C. Mitchinson. Do you recall that youth officer? I recall the name, but I don't. The date of this is the 7th of August 1979. Mm -hmm. And under events since last meeting, there's a note very tolerant. Very happy, low tolerance repairs, visited Hillview, etc. M. Groom reports that BGD has come to terms with father and sees need to keep away from him. J. Lyons feels that BGD still has concerns, re father, and that it would be most advisable for M. Groom to continue follow up as BGD still appears to have ambivalent feelings towards her father. Do you recall speaking to BGD around that time about her concerns about her father? No, I don't recall that, or whether I did. There's a note under section program, J Lyons to send letter to father, explaining that staff at Wynne Leighton and elsewhere are aware of his relationship with BGD. Yes. Do I take it from that that you believed BGD when she told you that her father had... I did, yes. Right. And did you... I withdraw that. At this, dis at this meeting on the 7th of August 1979, I withdraw that. Was there a meeting on the 7th of August 1979? I'm sorry, I don't remember, but there must have been. I okay. Yeah. And do we take it from this document that a decision was made at that meeting for you to send a letter to the father? Yes. We can take it then that there was no consultation with BGD about whether that letter should be sent? No, I don't think we can take that. I don't think we can say that because of the letter that was written and how I worded it. So, well, Do you assume at least, or I withdraw that, do I assume at least that a decision was made at this meeting to send the letter to the father and then some discussion may have taken place with BGD about it being sent? Um, yes, I would be inclined to say that the discussion did take place. All right. But, but yeah. it, this letter indicates, wasn't it, wasn't BGD's idea to send the letter to the father. That came out of the meeting. Yes, that's what it appears to be. Okay. So if you turn over the page to BGD's 27, mm -hmm. there's that letter that we can take it you wrote because it's got your signature on the bottom. Yep. It's dated the 9th of August 1979. Could you read that letter onto the record, please? Mm -hmm. Like it you wrote, because it's got your signature on the bottom. Yep. It's dated the 9th of August, 1970. And she feels that she would like you to know some of the things that she's been telling us about your relationship. She has shown us your letter, and it is obvious that she is very important to you. You both seem to care very much for each other, but BD, BGD has told us that your relationship has been a sexual one for some time. And when she first came to Winlayton, she asked us for help in sorting out her feelings about this. While BGD loves you very much, she's not happy with the relationship as it is, and our feeling is that your and our feeling is that your caring for each other is not expressed in an appropriate way. B's not happy with the relationship as it is, and our feeling is that your and our feeling is trying to sort out her feelings so that she can feel more comfortable about seeing you, but she needs to feel that you are willing to change the relationship also. She asked us to tell you all this as she felt that it was unfair that you did not that you did not know while we did. She is very worried that you will feel hurt by this letter, but believes that she ought to be honest with you. None of us wants to make you feel bad, but we do want BGD to feel better about her relationship with you. In telling you in, in telling you that she has told us about your relationship, none of us wants to make you feel bad, but we do want BGD to feel better about her relationship with you. And this is just one example of the growing up that BGD has done whilst at Winlayton. And I guess we all hope that you see this letter in the same light. What do you think now when you read that letter? I think that it could have been worded better. Um, I, oh, that, that's all I want to say for the moment. But, I, I'm going to suggest to you that it should have been worded entirely differently. Mm -hmm. Do you accept that? Well, it depends what, how, yeah, let's just go with it. All right, let me go on. Yep. This is put in terms of, let me read you an interview. It depends what, how, yeah, let's just go. 
what you knew at that stage, apart from your own recollection that he was creepy, your father, is that he was having a sexual relationship with a child, his daughter. That was an illegal act. You knew that then. Yes? Well, I, I, I suppose I did. I can't really see how I didn't, but I can't say that I definitely did. Did you understand that to be the rape of a child by their father? Yes. And yet what is written here is you both seem to care very much for each other. You would agree with me that a father raping their child is not caring for their child. I would agree with that. Okay. Um, I, would put, I would put a context around that which was about um, trying to protect BGD from any consequences of this letter and that and it's not it's not at all well written BGD from any consequences of this letter and ambivalence that she had towards her father and towards that relationship like any child she wished for his affection and his attention but she also knew that it was entirely inappropriate so it's it's sort of trying to encapsulate that and to protect her to some but extent. Do you understand now as a, a... But she also knew that it was entirely inappropriate. So it's, it's sort of trying to encapsulate that with her father. The feeling of ambivalence and being torn about a relationship with the father was part of the abuse. That that's in part what makes this so horrific, that she's being raped by her father and he's the person who's supposed to be one of her primary carers. Yes, well, that's how, yes, that's how I understand it now, and I think it's how I understood it then, to some extent. Then why would you write, you both seem to care for each other very much? That's how I understand it now, and I think it's how I understood it then, to some extent. Then why would you write, you both seem to care for each other very much? Because they did. I mean, I... Do you want to reflect, not, do you want to reflect well, on that? As it's worded, it certainly it, it, there's sort of an implied um, uh, I don't know romance uh, romance about that. That's not what I was trying to say. I was just acknowledging that each of them genuine um, complex yeah. sexual relationship between two consenting people. It should have said relationship has been a sexual one. It's it's written as if it's a genuine. Um, complex yeah. sexual relationship between two consenting people. It should have said that your... Well, I don't know what it should have said, really. I'd have to think about that. But that the, your father or daughter relationship or it's been an inappropriate... You know, yes, I agree. There's, um, I agree it's poor language. In the second paragraph, you read, she's very worried that you feel hurt by this letter but believes she ought to be honest with you. None of us want to make you feel bad. Was that true, that you didn't want to make him feel bad? My um, memory of why I wrote that was that it was connected to um, about him. Do you agree that it reads as if you're trying to pacify him or mollify him? Yeah, I can see that, or that, can, that internal conflict that she had about him. Do you agree that it reads as if you're trying to pacify him or mollify him? Yeah, I can see why it could see. Yeah, I can see it could be seen. Police. Yes. Because he was committing the illegal act of rape of his child. You agree? Mm -hmm. And do you know why he was not referred to the police at that stage? Because he was committing the illegal act of rape of his child. You agree? Mm -hmm. uh, learning about any policy or procedure for referral to police of certain crimes? No. Okay. Was there discussion by anybody, part of the team caring for BGD, about referral to the police at any stage? I don't recall. Did it even occur to you that there should be a referral made to the police? I, I'm sorry, I don't remember. Mrs. Ms. Mitchell, would you agree with the statement that at the time there was a general expectation that police were to be informed, informed of 
uh, sexual assault allegations of a child? Sorry, a general... <clears throat> I'm used to be informed, informed of uh, sexual assault allegations of a child. Sorry, a general... <clears throat> I'm using words, these words deliberately. Would you agree that at the time there was a general expectation among social workers such as you and Mr Fitzgerald that police were to be informed of child sexual assaults? I, I don't know if I can say that about myself at that time. Certainly now, it's very clear to me, but I... But on balance, I guess I would say yes. I don't really remember... Were you present when Mr Fitzgerald gave his evidence? Hmm? Do you recall him making that remark? Sorry, he said... Oh, yes. About the general expectation. Mm -hmm. Do you recall him saying that he didn't have an independent recollection, but he thought he would have referred it to his superior? Yes, I do recall that. And would you have held the same view? Yes, I think so. So do you think you did, even if you can't recall it? The, the way, I'm not sure that I, in one sense, had a superior to refer it to in that setting. Who was your superior? Well, I had a, um, a manager or a supervisor in head office, but as I think I said earlier, I don't recall that that was a supervisory relationship so much as a managerial one. I guess within the institution it would have been the deputy superintendent. I'm you sorry, see, that's not... In the examination of these issues by the Royal Commission, the institutional response... is at the forefront of our thinking. Mm -hmm. And for Mr Fitzgerald to say there was a general expectation would mean it was a matter that was discussed and generally known. Mm -hmm. And In the light of those answers, do you know why then this case was not referred to the police? I, I'm not able to say in a, <clears throat> um, a practical sense I am only able to talk from a therapeutic perspective, which was around us wanting to um, preserve a, a, relate, a working relationship with BGD that would allow us to support her um, and this is looking at it in the context of that then. I think That a, that a report, I think, I think, I, I think the thinking was, and I, you know, I really am speculating, but I think the thinking was that um, the consequences of making the report to the police at that time, we were concerned about how that might affect BGD in terms of the whole process that then would have occurred. Um, and I think, I honestly don't recall, but that's the impression that I'm left with from reading and thinking over the last couple of weeks. Do these documents also leave you with an impression that you and others working with BGD were trying to preserve some sort of relationship with her father for the future? No, I wouldn't say that. But it, but it was an acknowledgement of BGD's ambivalence in that there were times when she felt she might want to preserve a relationship with her father. I don't think I thought that was a good idea. Did you understand at that stage her to be trapped in a very abusive, a 
emotional relationship with her father. Mm. Did you see her as needing protection from that abusive emotional relationship? Yes, I did. Do you think that this case reveals to us a lack of understanding of how harmful any ongoing sexual abuse or rape by her father would be? Sorry, say it. Do you think that this case, this case of BGD, mm. reflects a lack of understanding by yourself and others at 1970, as at 1979, of the ongoing harm that the relationship with the father would cause? Yes, I think that's Does it reflect a trivialisation of the crime of incest? Do you mean that in terms of um, me personally or the system? I think I, I, I'm concerned about the word trivialisation. Let me use another word if you feel more comfortable yep. with it. Does it reflect um, a view that incest, of yourself firstly, that incest was treated less seriously as rape by a stranger? No, I don't think I'd agree with that. So you would have seen back in 1979 the crime of incest as being as damaging to BGD as if she'd been raped by a stranger? Yes, I think so. And yet if she'd been raped by a, by a neighbour, say, you would never have allowed that neighbour to have ongoing access visits to her. Correct? No. No. You're agreeing with me? Sorry, right? yes, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. Um, so in that way, there was a lack of understanding um, of the ongoing harm to her that would be caused by her continuing to have contact with her father? Possibly. Um, but I think... Oh, possibly. You now know that BGD left care at the age of 17 mm. and that she was raped by her father for many years following that. Mm. Um, let me ask you this first. Did you, was there an expectation on your part that she, BGD would continue to receive care after she left or, or follow up after she left the care yes. for the department? Who would have been responsible for that? Well, that would have been her case, her regional caseworker. And I guess also the staff of whatever, in this case, I think it was Hillview, you know, of whatever um, hostel or residential care she was in. That was the general expectation as at 1979, yes. that children would continue to receive... She was still a ward of the state, I, right. I understand. Yeah. At the age of... Uh, I withdraw that. Did you have an expectation that the department would continue to make sure that she was not raped again by her father? following those disclosures? Again, that would have been my understanding or, yeah. You now know that she was raped repeatedly for many years by her father. Um, how does that make you feel given that you were involved for this period of time in her care? I feel, I feel deeply saddened by that. And I do think there's a chain of people that failed her. Nothing further, thank you. Mr O'Brien. Thanks, Sean. Um, my name's O'Brien and I appear for uh, BGT. <coughs> uh, are you familiar with these personal reports? These um, that personal BGD wrote? Yes. Yes. I've seen... I have some of those in my documents, yeah. Right. So, uh, were these uh, the reports that you examined each week at your uh, case review meetings? I think I can't be 100... I can't say 100% yes, but I think so. I think they would have come to the meetings. Right. Um, so, it's likely that what's happened is that B, uh, G... That D has written these um, self-reports, if you like, um, over a series of weeks and months, and they've been considered by staff at Wynn Leighton on a regular basis. That's right? Yes. And you've had the opportunity now of examining a number of those. Yes. Uh, written over the period April through to uh, July of uh, 1979. 
And, and would you agree? You, you'll have to say yes or no, I'm afraid. Sorry, yes. <laughs> Thank you. And um, would you agree with me that they represent clear, unambiguous complaints of sexual assault by, a father, by her father upon her? Yes. Uh, would you agree with me that they represent uh, clear reports by her to a, to a large number of people about what was happening to her at her father's hands? Do you agree yes. with that? Yes. Do you agree with me also that uh, they represent a, a large number of complaints of that clear and um, ambiguous uh, nature? Do you accept that? Yes. That was quite unusual, wasn't it? A, 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 a girl such as her, 14, 15 years of age, making such clear statements as to what was happening to her in the privacy of her home with her father. I would say yes. I hadn't come across it myself before. And you, you, you say that you've got a feeling now, although you seem to be unsure about it, that you knew in your mind it was a criminal act that was being perpetrated upon her. You understood that then? Well, it, it is really hard to remember what I thought at that time, but I think on balance I would have to say that I must have known that. So, so if, if I can summarise that then, you, you, you're not clear now what you thought then about it being illegal or not? Um, Yes, but just in the sense that I can't remember, you know, myself back then thinking that, but I must have because that is the that was what was the um, the war at the time. Well, I, 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 this is not a memory test, but I, I do want to delve a bit into your thinking at the time, yeah. for May. Yeah. Yeah. You, you knew, as a twenty-six-year-old social worker with a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Social Work, I think that's what you had, is it? Mm -hmm. That incest was a crime. Yes, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just say that, yeah. Interfamilial uh, relationships of a sexual nature yep. was illegal. Yes. You understood that? Yes. Okay, then, next. Did you have, at that same time, an understanding that it was tantamount to rape or sexual assault of a serious type? Yes. And you think that it's possible that you understood that to be something that needed to be communicated to the police? Sorry, say that one again. That was clumsy, I'm sorry. You, you think that it's possible that this ought to have been communicated to the police, this complaint that you had from the CGP? Yes. But you know now that it wasn't communicated to the police? Yes. And no uh, police involvement ever happened uh, for, for many, many years to come? Yes. Can I suggest to you, Madam, that in fact you didn't understand it to be criminal behaviour back then? Cause. Instead, you considered it to be the product of a dysfunctional <clears throat> family. Well, I think both, really. Well, you, well, let's let's look at it. You didn't deal with it as a criminal offence. No. What was happening, did you? No. The way that the letter is expressed, and in fact, the the dealings with the GD <coughs> seem to be suggestive of dealing with it as family dysfunction, don't they? Uh, yes, that's yep, So that's again, I, set, I suggest to you, in 1979, as a 26-year-old social worker with two degrees, uh, you were dealing with this behaviour by the father, which was then illegal as a matter of family dysfunction and not as criminal behaviour. Do you agree? That we were dealing with it in that way, That's yes. That's the way you dealt with it. Yeah, that is the way we dealt with it, yes, I agree with that. And 
do you understand? Do, do, you, you seem to have some recollection of your, of your thinking in putting together that letter. Is that, is that the case? Yes, from reading it and knowing how I operated or operate as a social worker, I think. And I, I think you've said that it was a it was a significant type of event, this disclosure by um, BGD, wasn't it? Sorry, it was... It was a significant disclosure by BGD to you. Um, well, if I can just say I don't have a recollection of her directly disclosing to me, but obviously I knew about, I knew about it. So, I'm sorry, I, I don't know if you can reword. Well, when, when, you, when you thought about this letter, you knew that Dad um, was still wanting to be involved in her life. Mm -hmm. You knew that? I think so. You knew that Dad had, um, in recent months, uh, attempted to be sexually active towards her. Um, before she was in Wilayton. Before she was in Wilayton. Mm -hmm. In recent months. You knew that? Yes. You knew that he was a person who had uh, serious mental health issues? No, I didn't know that. Well, you knew that he, was, he might hurt himself? No, I didn't know that. You knew that uh, there had been a history of family violence perpetrated by the father against the children and the wife? No, oh, I, well, I don't recall knowing that. Did you know at that stage that the... That you knew at that stage that the mother had been told uh, about the, uh, if you like, the department's knowledge of what was happening? I don't recall whether I knew that or not. Sorry. Even with knowledge of some of those factors I've pointed to you, mm. you must have known that there was a real danger that the father would be aggravated by the communication in this letter that BGD had divulged the sexual nature of their relationship. Uh, I don't recall, but I would say probably yes. Well, isn't that why the letter's in such conciliatory terms? That you knew he would be possibly very aggravated by coming to learn that? Um, yes. And you knew, I expect, that this would have an impact, that his knowing about this knowledge would have an impact on the broader family. Yes. The mother, the relationship with the grandparents, etc. Yes. And you took those matters into account in writing this letter, did you? Uh, well, I would, I would say that the, the main thing I took into account would have been BGD <coughs> and her reaction. I don't remember, but I, she was my main concern, just put it that way, I guess. Yeah. And, and now you've read BGD's statement? I haven't read it, but I heard it this morning. Right, good. And so you know that the impact of this letter, first of all, it alienated her from her, from her mother? Yes. Sorry, yes. It alienated her from her grandparents? Yes. She became a family scapegoat in relation to the breakdown and further disintegration of the family unit? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. And her family became extremely angry, volatile and aggressive towards her? Yes. 
Her mother expressed disbelief and didn't believe her. Yes, I'm, I've only heard this statement once, but I accept that you're telling me what she said. Yeah. I want to suggest you that all of those things would have been, even then in 1979, patently obvious as possibilities from the, from the flow of the letter lines. <clears throat> Yes. Uh, yes. And of course, you've learned about the long term impact on her. That she learned not to trust that professionals would would take appropriate action yeah. when she sought it. Yes. Have nothing for Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> um, this is all on Daniel Gervich, your counsel, you understand. Some questions were asked about um, whether you um, believed um, BGD's um, statements of sexual abuse. Um, did you? I did, yes. Can you please clarify... Um, that you were physically based at Wynn Leighton and whether you, in fact, worked for Wynn Leighton. Please clarify that. Yeah, so I was physically based there, but I belonged to a unit that was not um, part of Wynn Leighton. I want to refer you to some documents. The first is uh, <clears throat> BGD 8. Document-headed classification action sheet and dated 18th of April 1979. Do you have that? Yeah. Um, the previous witness, Mr Fitzgerald, was taken to this document by counsel assisting. Um, yes. Did you know that? Yeah. And in a question to him, it was suggested that um, that you, you, Ms Mitchell, were part of a team as of March 1979. Yes. Um, were you? Yes. But, so I'm sorry, let me clarify that question. In relation to um, the person, the, the girl, BGD, um, when did you become involved um, with her, having looked at the documents? Well, sometime between her admission at the end of March and, I guess, this document. Um, it's not clear to me whether this is the first classification action sheet or whether there were ones before that, but yeah. Can you please have a look at uh, BGD 15? you've seen since being summoned as a witness to this Royal Commission? Yes. Just read it to, you, to yourself, please. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Now, there is reference there to... It's a memorandum from Maryland Minister to Michael Groom, yes? Yes. Dated 13 June 1979. Yes. And says that BGG, that's the father, yes. rang me yesterday to ask permission to visit BGD today mm -hmm. at 10.30 or 11am, permission granted. Perhaps you would like to arrange to see him then also to sign Marilyn. Mm -hmm. um, what can you tell the Royal Commission about your involvement in that um, event? I don't, I don't think I had any involvement in that event. Please look at BGD 16. Mm -hmm. Headed uh, Wynn Leighton Psychiatric Service, confidential for departmental use only, progress report. Yes. Have you seen that document? Yes. Um, paraphrasing, it relates to a visit on that day by um, BGD's father. 
letters dated, or the documents dated 14 June 1979. Mm -hmm. Did you have any involvement in that? Um, is not, it? not that I recall. There's reference in paragraph um, two. She agrees that it is a good idea for me to see her father and discuss their relationship, although, of course, she remains ambivalent about it. Um, do you have any input into that um, conclusion or that statement? Um, again, not that I recall. Paragraph three. I will contact... BGG within the next 24 hours to arrange a time suitable to us both for me to see him. Were you involved in that? Not that I recall. Or I will discuss my interview with BGG with BGD next Wednesday. Were you involved in that? Not that I recall. Um, it's signed by MJ Groom, you see. Yes. And it's distributed to a number of, um, says it's distributed to a number of identities <coughs> at the bottom, yes? Yes. Um, was it distributed to you? <coughs> Sorry, was it distributed to me? Not that I recall, and I don't think any of those places came across, all those files or whatever came across, Michael. Sorry, I'm just having difficulty oh, hearing you. Um, Can you just sit up a bit closer to yes, the microphone, sorry. please? Um, sorry, what was the question? Would I have seen...? Yes, would you yeah, have seen it? No, I don't think so. Um, would you please have a look at BGD 26? Review action sheet dated 7 August 1979. Mm -hmm. And you've given evidence about this in answer to questions by council assisting, is that right? Yes. <coughs> the about halfway down the page, staff action to be taken. Yes. Section program, J lines to send. Letter to father explaining that staff at Wynn Leighton and elsewhere are aware of his relationship with BGD. Do you see that? Yes. Um, <coughs> having looked at that document, whose decision was that? Sorry, whose decision? To send the letter. Well, I don't recall, but looking at the sheet, I would say that it was a a joint decision of the people who were at that meeting. Um, <clears throat> you please turn to P BGD 27, mm -hmm. letter dated 9 August 1979. Commence that letter by saying that BGD has asked us to write to you. Yep. Is it your evidence that that's what has in fact happened? Yes. I don't recall that, but what I do know is that I would not have written that had I not believed it to be the case. The letter is signed by you. Yes. And it also has the name Michael Groom, although not bearing his signature. Yes. Um, was Michael Groom involved in um, the writing of that letter? I don't recall. Was anyone else involved in the writing of the letter? Well, I don't recall that either. Um, but I, I, I wonder whether... The way that it's written makes me wonder whether I did have a conversation with BGD about the sorts of things that might be put in it, but I can't say that for sure. When you wrote the letter or were involved in its writing, did you have any regard to the consequences um, of that letter for BGD? Yes, I did. Um, I was very much concerned to not uh, um, create consequences for her from her father, which is why it is so... Um, I don't know, wishy-washy. It's not a very professional term or technical term, but um, yes, it was trying to make it not confrontational, I guess. Um, 
or why did you not write it in, in stronger terms uh, using different language? Well, that was out of concern for how that might have affected, how, how there might have been repercussions for BGD from her dad. And what are you talking about with respect to repercussions? Well, anger, um, withdrawal, rejection, all of the things that she feared. At that time, that is 9th of August 1979, um, what was your understanding as to whether BGD would or might, <coughs> would or might um, have contact with her father in the future? Sorry, what was my understanding? Yes. At the time of writing that letter, yep. did you have an understanding as to whether, or a belief, as to whether she would or might um, have contact with her father, either within with Leighton or without? Well, I think that my, my belief and my hope at that time would have been that she wouldn't have, in fact, had contact, certainly not any unsupervised contact with her father. Did you recognise a possibility that she, that she may? Yes, I think I would have. So I don't think I could, that couldn't be guaranteed from where I sat, really. Just to be clear, is it your evidence that it was a joint team decision to write the letter and it fell to you to write it? Uh, yes. You were asked by the Commissioner about um, who your supervisor was at the time um, uh, and you referred to the, the Deputy Superintendent. Is that accurate? Well, as I said, I'm not really sure. I mean, in a, in a way, I didn't have a supervisor you know, in one sense, but I guess in terms of day-to-day -day work, because she was the deputy superintendent and I was working with girls in Winlate, and then she would have been the person I would have talked to about um, issues in relation to the girls. Did she, that is the deputy superintendent, mm -hmm. know about the sexual abuse? Yes, she must have, because she'd been at all the meetings, all the classification meetings. Did other people, let me break this down, before you became involved with BGD, did other people know about it, as far as you can tell, looking back? I would say yes, because um, just the way that the process went, I wasn't right at the beginning of any kind of admission process in, into the institution. I came along a bit later on. And during the time that you were involved, the t two or so months, mm -hmm you were involved with BGD, did other people know about the yes, they did. sexual abuse? Yes, they did. And how do you know that? Well, really from the documents, not from my own memory. Yeah. Yes, thank you. I wonder if I may be given leave to ask one very brief question yes. to, arising from that yes. um, as a point of clarification. <coughs> Um, uh, Mrs. Lyons, uh, Mrs. Mitchell, I beg your pardon. Um, you um, referred to the deputy. You just referred to the deputy superintendent mm -hmm. being present at the classification meetings. Um, was it the case that uh, there were two deputy superintendents, one who had the responsibility for classifications, and the other who had the responsibility for programs? Are you aware of that? Um, now that you tell me, I think that's right. Does that remind you? It now? does. Yeah, it rings a bell. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And you mentioned Graham Lord um, a little while ago. Um, you understood him to be a deputy superintendent. I did, but only because of what was said in this context. But I remembered. Yes. I do remember him now. Yeah. But as you sit there now, you couldn't say whether he was for programs no, or for sorry. classification. No. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing further. Um, I wonder, <clears throat> please, uh, Ms Mitchell, could you just help me under understand one of these documents? Sure. I'm referring to BGD 26, mm -hmm. and that's a review action sheet. Yes. Um, in the uh, remarks in the first section, it seems to me that uh, Mr Groom and you were present. 
Yes. Does this document mean that uh, Ms. Byrne and Ms. Mitchison were also present? The Byrne is mentioned at the bottom under community supervisor and the allocated youth officer is Mitchison. Yes. I mean, who was present at, at well, this I, meeting? I can't be sure, 100% mm -hmm. sure, but I think the normal procedure would have been that C. Mitchison would have been there. Yes. But I think not B. Byrne because she, I think it's a she, um, was the regional caseworker located in South Melbourne and they didn't generally come to that meeting. So definitely, in your view, Ms. Mitchison, yourself and Mr. Groom? Yes, I would say so. And if we go to the middle section there where it refers to staff action to be taken day program, yeah. you, you see there it says uh, section program J lines to send letter to father explaining that staff at Lynn Waite and, and elsewhere are aware of his relationship with BGD. Yes. Then it says medical, mm -hmm. VD check clear. Yes. It then refers to the um, uh, uh, contraception which was being provided. Yes. And then says Mr. Groom was meant to follow up in counselling. Yes. Uh, uh, contraception which was being provided. Yes. And then says Mr. Groom was meant to follow up in counselling. Yes. Is that VD check, girls? I'm sorry, I don't recall. It wasn't. So it wasn't in my remit at all, and I don't really recall. And was the provision of contraception specific to BGD, or was that for all girls? Again, I don't recall, um, except to say that uh, if a girl... Again, I don't recall, um, except to say that set of roles or responsibilities... Well, this is hard for me to interpret on its face. I know. But as I look at it, it could be interpreted as saying that not only uh, in that middle section uh, was it discussed that you three were aware of the relationship, but you, you were aware that the young... Uh, was it discussed that you three were aware of the relationship? to avoid being impregnated by her father. Now, that's one reading that's possible. That is a possible reading. I think you would need to ask um, a Winlayton staff member to clarify that, because it's not really part of my... Well, or wasn't. if that interpretation was possible, it puts a very serious uh, light on, on, on this matter. Yes. You would agree? Yes, I would, which is why I think it's important to be able to follow. Very serious uh, light on, on, on this matter. Yes. You would agree? Ms. Dry, were there some matters that uh, arising that you wanted to were, take Honor, up with Ms. Mitchell? Excuse me, Your Honour, excuse me. That you wanted to were, take Honor, up with Ms. Mitchell? Your Honour, excuse me. Now, have a Can I ask for this document to be put on the... BDG6. Do you see that that document's entitled Gynecological History? Yes. Are you talking to me? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed that. To me? Yes. yes. Do you see that that document's yes. entitled Gynecological History? Are they, is this a medical document that would have been prepared at Wynn Layton? Do you I'm recognize? sorry, I don't know. It's not. You don't recognise it? No. Do you see there a note? Early April nine, April, early April seventy nine in the far left hand column. Yes. 
VD check 20. Do you see there a note early April 9, April, early April 79 in the file of VGD? Yes. And the note there is wants checkup. You agreed that that was at a time when you were involved with VGD? Yes. And the note there is wants checkup. Do you read that as clear? Admits incest father. Yep. Could be claims. Incest claims father. incest father. Claim. Does that suggest that BGD may have been given a contraceptive because there was a risk of ongoing sexual with BGD? Have anything to do with? Do you have any recollection of discussing contraceptives with BGD? No. Agreed with me earlier that the document which appears at BGD 26, which is the review action sheet, reflects the fact that a, a group decision was made to send the letter to BGD's father. Mm -hmm. And then the letters. First line is BGD has asked us to write to you. You have no recollection of BGD asking you to write that letter. No, I don't. Is it? Do you accept that it's possible that that first line is written in that way, as part of the emotional massaging of the father that you were doing there? No, I don't. Why not? Well, because I would not have written. BGD has asked us to write to you unless I believed that I had her permission to say that. Um, well, you might have then, you might have asked permission from BGD to write the letter, but you don't suggest to you that it was BGD's idea that a that letter be written know, by far. I, I don't recall that now. When I, I hadn't, I'm not sure if I had, I'd have to check, but I'm, you know, I would have seen the review action sheet on the 7th of the 8th. Um, I, sorry, what was the question again? I don't suggest that it was BGD's idea to send a letter to the father. I can't, I don't know. I can't recollect. That, you agree with me that that's not likely, given the document that appears beforehand, which appears to reflect a decision by the group for J Lyons to send a letter to father? Yes, so I guess one possible explanation is that the group decided that and then I talked to her about writing it and then I had her permission, but in fact she may have felt pressured to give that permission. Okay. What did you but think... But I would also, sorry, I would also say that it would not have been my practice to pressure her. I'm saying she may have felt that and I can understand that I was the social worker, she was the, the child, but I would not have been consciously pressuring her. And what did you think would happen to the relationship between BGD and her father as a result of sending that letter? I don't recall really what I thought. Um, I'd only be speculating. I, yeah, I'm sorry. Is it possible that what you thought is that it would facilitate an appropriate relationship between father and daughter, that it would stop the father's rape of his child? Um, I, I really don't. I couldn't say yes to that. I couldn't really say no either. It's possible. If you did think that, do you agree, looking back on it now, that that was hopelessly naive? Yes. I, I, find, I find that language <coughs> difficult to agree to, but yes. Is there another way you want to describe it? Inexperienced. You know, yes, not thinking things through as fully as I might have. I just think hopelessly naive is a bit um, strong. It, it reflects, doesn't it, a lack of understanding of yes, the gravity right. of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. If you had been told by the department that, in fact, BGD's father had been in a psych ward and had been physically abusive to, to her, as well as the abuse involved in the rape, do you think that would have altered your decision as to whether it was appropriate to send this letter? It may have. 
I can't really say for sure because the context is broader than that, but it may have. Nothing further, thank you. Um, Ms Mitchell, just, can I just raise one, one matter with you? Um, you uh, I understand that you've indicated now that you listened to BGB's evidence this morning. Yes. And you've had some now exposure to the documents that are um, produced before the Royal Commission. You've indicated um, several times throughout your evidence, and I think it's completely uncontroversial, that um, <clears throat> at the very least this child was, uh, to all of the professionals uh, who were having contact with her, demonstrating a very, um, as I've said at the very least, confused, conflicted and ambivalent psychological and emotional state. Yes. Um, as you now understand uh, the, co the contents of the material that's come before the Commission, do you think it's a, it's a fair assessment to make to say that the um, professionals representing the state were also mirroring that confusion and ambivalence? Um, yes, I do. That. Rather than taking decisive yes. action yes. and exercising their role yes. with respect to this child. Yes, I do. Anything arising out of that for anyone? Thank you. Thank you, Ms Mitchell, and you're excused. Thank you. <coughs> Just remind everyone that it's 10.30... Um, tomorrow morning rather than uh, rather than 10. Your Honour, I tender the statement. And Thank you. 30.19. Uh, 30 the statement of Jennifer Mitchell. Thank you. 10.30.